So we now enter into a sort of a fairly open period of question and answer. Um, and depending upon how many questions we have, uh, we can um, uh, spend a bit of time on that. Or we can move straight on to our, um, our, our second keynote of the day. So, so there's some online questions. So uh, maybe if we go to our online question first. Yes. question about openness. Well, actually, I think that's really a question almost for our, our, our keynote next. Donald, do you want to take that? How do we filter down the culture of openness to um, others? I, I, I think it, it is difficult, um, although I would say that uh, my impression is that uh, in the general field of um, collections, taxonomy, and natural history, uh, there is a probably a, a stronger bias towards openness than there may be in many other uh, research domains, which actually stands in good stead, because uh, many individuals and many groups do seem very committed to the possibility that their observations and their data may contribute to conservation and other aspects. Nevertheless, I think um, part of this is that we have to think not just um, in terms of uh, those who have relevant information, giving it away uh, for the public good, but also what are the mechanisms whereby those who uh, are contributing valuable information get appropriate uh, credit, uh, either uh, in terms of the same sorts of um, career assessment factors that might come from uh, peer-reviewed publications, uh, or at least uh, perhaps in the case of amateurs, more in terms of some kind of reputational system. Uh, clearly, uh, unless the world changes greatly, we're not talking about shoveling money at people for these things. Uh, but um, I, I believe that a, a, a culture which does give credit for such openness makes a big difference. And I know that there are many who do get very excited about the fact that photographs they've taken are now the illustrations for Wikipedia articles and things like that. And um, that's not necessarily that they've um, somehow secured funding for anything they've done. It's just visibility for doing things that uh, excite them and others may find useful. Thanks. Yeah, I, I'd agree. Um, I mean, on the same topic, actually, I had a question for George regarding the Wallace Online correspondence. So you mentioned that a large number of those, uh, that that correspondence couldn't be made available because, well, actually, why? So what are the details behind that? Yeah, um, part of UK copyright law is the 2039 um, rule, which um, says that all manuscripts that were um, unpublished at the death of an author remain in copyright till 2039. Um, and so the, um, the, the ownership of the copyright actually passes to the descendants. And in order to publish something on the web, um, an image of the letter, you have to somehow track down the descendants, which is often impossible. Um, luckily, that law is under review. Um, in fact, our archivist Caroline went to the House of Commons recently to be involved in discussions about a possible change in the law. Um, and so it, it could actually be abolished um, uh, sometime later this year. And I hopefully it, it will be, because it's a major impediment with projects of this type. Thanks, George. Any other questions for any of the other talks that we've heard thus far today, particularly the keynotes, or particularly the lightning talks, rather? No? No more online? Okay, well, I think we're almost then back to our schedule.